what's going on everybody my name is Zell Prince and welcome back to yet another reaction now today I got another Poppy Playtime video for you guys but this time it's project playtime related material and if you recall the last uh, Poppy Playtime video I reacted to I mentioned I did not play any of the material that's in project playtime because I don't have many people to play with well in terms of friends I know there are, some of them are quite busy with stuff they do but I just never got around to playing Project Playtime. And this video is related to Project Playtime because it's a game theory video. And I know for a fact I have not watched this video at all yet. Because I've watched all of his other stuff that uh, Matt had uploaded in the past. But I did not react to any of them because I was not reacting to any of uh, Matt Pat's theory videos at all at the time. And I don't know why. And I got the hiccups because I'm... For some, because I'm drinking water like I always am. Can we get a water counter for these videos in the comment section? It's just to see how many how many times I take a sip of water during these videos. I always have water for all of my videos, even my gameplay ones. <laughs> but anyway, I'm getting off topic. We're gonna go ahead and react to this bad boy because I know I know for sure I have not watched it yet. And we're gonna go ahead and get right into it in three, two, one. Go. We are a failed breed, created against our will, only to labor on their terms. Slaves given life by others, only to have none I brought of our own. And now they try to make more of us. No! Get up! Go! Stop them! Feed your hunger! Slake your thirst! If we can be born on their terms, they can die on ours! <laughs> Hello, Interesting Internet! Intro. Welcome to Game Theory, where buttons are gonna light up randomly on screen right now. Press them as fast as you can to play. Alright? Ready? Green. Red. Yellow. Green. Blue. 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 Subscribe? Huh, how'd that get in there? Wait, that's that's not a button on the screen. Oh, it's below the video. Well, to finish the game, you know what you gotta do. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back to Poppy Playtime. The game that continues to throw us some curveballs. Is Poppy helping us or not? Are these living toys made from orphans or not? Am I getting weird feelings for mommy long legs or is that just my normal mommy issues cropping up? You know, the usual questions. But today's <laughs> curveball right. is anything but usual, as Mob Games decided to surprise us all not with the drop of Chapter 3, but rather with the reveal of its brand new spin-off title, Project Playtime. A multiplayer survival game where you can literally play as Mom Spaghetti. Eminem would be so proud. Wow, In the game, that... you and your friends act huh. as resource extraction specialists heading to Playtime Co. to collect the parts that'll allow us to build giant living toys. But things aren't as simple as just playing a bunch of rounds as Simon says. The whole time you're solving puzzles, you'll be hunted by one of the game's monsters. Huggy Wuggy, Mommy Long Legs, and the newcomer, Boxy Boo. My honest reaction? It's incredibly fun to play. The skins are awesome, the emotes are fun, the puzzles find the right level of difficulty. Overall, the team and I had a blast playing it over on GT Live, even if there were a few bugs that needed to be worked out, as Tom would very quickly come to discover. Is that you? Oh yeah. Hey bud, it is you. Stuck. It is me. <laughs> Look at your little army. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you can still Yeah, I knew, I knew about some of the bugs as well. That's another reason why I didn't start playing the game right away. Oh, don't worry about him, though. Tom would make sure he had his revenge in the next round. Uh-oh. No! I have a toy part! Tom! No! I Tom, had a toy come part! Come on, Tom! Tom! Come on, Tom! I had a toy part! <laughs> Boo, Tom! Everyone, let's all Boo. collect. Boo! Everyone, Boo. 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 Tom in the comments! Boo! Boo. Like I said, it's a really fun game, but of course, we don't care about whether something is fun or not on this yeah, channel. Yeah, you're here we for the here lore. We are here for one thing and one thing only. The lore! And just like with the gameplay, Mob Games delivered big time here. When you first boot up the game, you're thrown into a tutorial which is full of this stuff. Lore drops left and right. And then, when you've played the game enough, you'll also unlock a lore-filled VHS tape. Which means it's time for us to head back into the cursed toy box, where today, I'm about to prove to you that the scariest, most threatening figure pulling the string rings in this game may actually have been the hero all along. That's right, folks, it's classic game theory time. The bad guy wasn't the bad guy after all. In Project Playtime's VHS tape, we're introduced to a new character named Harley Sawyer, known simply as the Doctor. The Doctor. <laughs> 
not <laughs> Doctor that Who. Kind of doctor. This guy doesn't have himself a box that's bigger on the inside. Instead, he has a plan that involves being bigger on the outside. Now we're understaffed. Safety protocols are being abandoned. Workplace incidents are common. We need to deal with all of these issues at once. I'm here now with a solution. Giant toys. We can increase our workforce and simultaneously decrease the number of lawsuits and people on our payroll if the people we have working aren't people. Huggy Wuggy, what? Mommy Long Legs, and Boxy Boo, these jumbo sized living toys, they're all part of this initiative. In chapter 2, we learned that Mommy Long Legs was used to help supervise the kids playing around in the game station, but I don't think any of us really took the implications of that seriously. These giant toys were actually made with the express purpose of working in the factory, lifting boxes, patrolling hallways, cleaning toilets, and knowing um, this, it Okay, I did not even think about that. VHS tape we hear in the game make a lot more sense. So, trespasser, just to make you aware, while we pride ourselves primarily on our high-quality toys and excellent child care, we also pride ourselves on our security. For example, this facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which, once set off, will turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And that's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. I'd never no thought about He's it. talking about Huggy. Huggy is literally the factory security. Step aside, Fritz Smith. There's a new night guard in town, and he is tall and blue and fuzzy. For the first time in the series, we have and has a lot of as teeth. to why these toys actually came into being. So, the next question is when. As we start to piece together a timeline of events for the factory, be helpful to know when this initiative started. Well, Project Playtime actually gives us a lot of information on that. Boxy Boo's really? description tells us that he was based on a toy from 1966. Huggy Wuggy's description is similar, telling us that the giant monster was based on a toy created back in 1984. But Mommy Longlegs' description actually works a bit differently. You see, it makes it clear that in her case, the toy didn't come first. Instead, the giant mommy that we saw throughout Chapter 2 was created in 1991 in an effort to use the company's new elastic plastic. And eventually, she became, quote, so popular that Playtime Co. created a toy out of her and took it to market. That tells oh. us that the Bigger Bodies initiative had to have started prior to her creation in or before 1991. And considering that she's experiment 1222 and that Huggy was 1170, it had to have been significantly earlier than that, probably around 1990. And that's not all the timeline information that we get here. For more, we turn our attention to the Project Playtime ARG. That's right, Mob Games heard my cries for more interesting clues. I really wanted to do a theory just on these cardboard cutouts, <laughs> expecting there to be some sort of hidden lore inside the glitchy audio. The perfect place to hide some lore, mob games. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And so they decided to raise me an entire ARG. The ARG itself is actually super interesting and really complex. Unfortunately, most of it was teasing the new character for this game, Boxy Boo. And by the time we managed to solve it, the teaser was already out and the game wasn't that far off either. Plus, the ARG has now been wiped from the internet, so it doesn't really make sense for us to cover it anymore. But if you oh. do want to see the ins and outs of it, which are really cool, I highly recommend watching Sheep Rampage's video series on it. They were covering all the puzzles and solutions as they were happening in real time. So definitely worth a watch. It's a long series, but it's a good series. So boom, just solved your afternoon of entertainment. Today though, we're just gonna be <laughs> focusing on the details that matter for us moving forward. During the ARG, we heard from a new character named Rowan Stoll, an employee that was initially concerned about Huggy Wuggy being used to watch children. Hello, Mr. Pierre. I know you don't want to hear any more about this. I get it. Sounds like a bad joke, Huggy Wuggy staring at children. If some creep is hiding nanny cams in our mascot's eyeballs, then something needs to be taken seriously. The next video we see of him though, he's changed his tune. I just want to apologize. I was wrong. Nothing How long? Wait, hold on. There's a date no, in the bottom. Then oh, two months later. Okay. The next video we see of him though, he's changed his tune. I just want to apologize. I was wrong. Nothing weird is, is going on here at all. Clearly, he figured out that something more sinister was going on, and that the living Huggy security system was a feature, not a bug. In that video, he tries to throw everyone off the scent that he knows anything. I'm not looking into it anymore. I mean, not that there was anything to look into in the first place. Smooth, Rowan. Very <laughs> smooth. Clearly, Playtime's aware that he knows too much and wants to silence him. But Rowan hatches a plan. I think I'm gonna die. I had to pretend I've seen nothing so the company would leave me alone. I've scheduled the company's... The, the servers, the security, to be shut down for 60 minutes of maintenance. While security is out, I'm going to release everything 
I'm run. I think they're gonna kill me first. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. Rowan goes down into the basement and stands face to face with Boxy Boo, who does what toys do best, eats him alive. Notice the dates on all of his videos though, 1991. So for Rowan to have seen a giant huggy watching children and then get eaten by a giant Boxy Boo, it means the Bigger Bodies program was up and operational by March 30th, 1991. We can oh. also add to the timeline when Project Playtime itself takes place. In Project Playtime, one of the toys that we're tasked with assembling is a large scale book Boogie bots based on the games based on the games oh, sorry based on the games NFTs. Ugh. We know that the toy <laughs> was, was, like, was made in 1993, meaning the company had to still be functional as a toy factory at least until then. Considering that this was their last major toy made, though, we can assume that the place shut down shortly thereafter. We hear this event happening in Chapter 1 when the toys begin their rampage. Today's events are no doubt in relation to him. Most likely, then, Project Playtime takes place sometime in the decade prior to Chapter 1, the time after everyone went missing, but before we return to the toy factory to explore its mysteries. Playtime Co. needed special Specialists to go into the factory on their well, yeah, now that you th now that I really think about it, all, all the technology, some of the technology you see rambling around the around the factory, like some of the computers, the VHS S tapes, that was still very early um, stuff during the early two thousands. I remember using a couple of them, uh, them when I was in early, in um, preschool. So it's actually something I've never really considered. Like when did uh, the events of Poppy Playtime truly take place. Not something I actually ever considered. Sorry, I'm drinking drinking water. And it's just for some reason getting to me. Well, it's water, to I swear to God. Initiative, despite Look at monsters it. that are now roaming the hallways freely. <laughs> but what's interesting is that up until now, we've assumed that these monsters are being driven purely by their hunger. But Project Playtime reveals that that's not the case. They what? to build more toys, more light. It has to be stopped. This mysterious voice is talking to Huggy, and presumably the other giant toys throughout the factory, getting them to work together in order to feed themselves, but also to stop those who are trying to make the Bigger Bodies initiative a success. Whoever this mysterious voice is, they do not want more monsters to be created. But who could it possibly be? I'm gonna call it, it's gonna be the prototype. Fortunately, I didn't have long to wait for an answer because during my playthrough on GT Live, I got a loading screen that told me exactly who oh. it was. I got okay. a loading screen. Which one did you get? I got uh, Mommy Longlegs being puppeteered by oh, 1006. One. Yeah, mine is Huggy just chasing people. So you definitely got the interesting one. You got the nice. lore there. I got the lore! <laughs> See? Experiment 1006 has been one of the franchise's biggest mysteries. Each installment reveals a little bit more about him. The first chapter showed us that he was a prototype to all these toy experiments. That he had a digestive tract but didn't require food to survive. The second chapter revealed him to be incredibly intelligent, tampering with cameras and alarm clocks in order to sabotage the scientists doing experiments on him. He even showed up at the end of chapter two to drag a lifeless mommy long legs away. But his end goal, his motivation has largely been a mystery. Thanks to this tutorial though, we now know what he wants. He's trying to stop the experiments. He's trying to stop people being used to make these toys. That's why he helped to release all the giant toys before the events of Project Playtime. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process. The giant toys are organized. They're working together. Together, and it's because this one creation is able to psychically talk to them all. Again, this gives huh. more clarity to something that we heard back in chapter one. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set. And while he doesn't want more toys to be made, he is taking care of all the monsters that already exist. The others are hungry. The others are starving. Get up. He's keeping them fed, he's keeping them alive, and most importantly, he's keeping them safe. These people didn't ask to be turned into toys. This isn't what they wanted. And while 1006 can't fix them, he can keep them alive. He has good intentions. Even though he's got himself a scary voice and a creepy metal claw hand, I think yeah. he's the good guy. He might actually be the hero of this story. And his heroism isn't just limited to protecting the monsters. We know based on documents from chapter two that he's also actively trying to save kids. One thing everyone put together Wait, what? fairly quickly after chapter two's release was the fact that Playtime Co. seemed to be testing children in order to put them into the perfect toy. Specifically, we see two documents outlining the performance of Michaela Hyssop as the researchers tried yeah, to remember this that. with candy cats. But one of the things that all of us overlooked was how these performance assessments ended. Neither document is finished. Both of them trail off as the pen scribbles off the page. What's more, there's blood on the paper. It suggests that not just once, but twice, researchers were killed while testing Michaela. 
Michaela. And Michaela actually sees it coming. At the end of both the documents, while undergoing the statues game, we read that Michaela is distracted by something else. Presumably, this is the giant monster that's coming to kill the researchers. This tells us then an important detail. The prototype is saving these kids as many times as it takes. Whether it was Mommy Longlegs coming in to kill the researchers or the prototype himself, we know that the prototype's behind it because he's the one puppeteering all the big monsters. And he has repeatedly stepped in to save the kids. I don't know about you, but that huh. sounds like a good guy to me. And he's not only using the other monsters to save the kids, he's also using us. Remember that line I just showed you from the monster tutorial? <laughs> Get up. Those last two words, don't they seem Get familiar? Up. Yep, the death messages Ow. from both chapters almost always end with those exact words. Get up. Which Sorry, I thought, I, us I thought I woke up Taz. She's sleeping over there again. <laughs> Hold on, let me show you. Oh god, I think I just messed up my webcam. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay, I fixed the webcam. Let's just, uh... Shit. <laughs> right here. She's sleeping right there. Right over there. Let me try and put my webcam back. Damn it! <laughs> I need a new webcam. <laughs> I definitely need a new webcam, guys. <laughs> that's, uh, that's four times it did that, no matter how many times I touched it. So, I'll make that a note to get a better a new webcam in the future, not a very expensive one, not yet anyway, since I primarily do reaction videos on this channel to begin with. Uh, okay, all right, I think we're good. Taz, you goddamn caused me a nut to my webcam to mess up. She's sleeping, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna get, let's continue respawning. Up until now, we've been under the impression that two people have been speaking to us through these death screens. The lowercase words that are far more motivating, like, we're almost there, or it's not over, being from Poppy, trying to get us to find her at the end of every chapter. And the second, yeah. uppercase words, like, innovation is key, thank you, science, or he's loose, this is an emergency lockdown, being from either Elliot Ludwig or a scientist that was working on the project. But now, I don't think that's the case. Yes, there are two tones of messages, but almost all of them end with the exact same two words, get up. I think this is experiment 1006 trying to communicate with us. More lives are at risk than just yours. He's Hold trying to back. get us to help. God damn it. God dang it, damn it. And a phone, and phone call this time. This time it's Amazon. I'll grab it later. <laughs> Gotta crawl down the damn stairs again. The trapped souls inside the factory. The one Sorry, can we go back a couple seconds? Case. Yes, there are two tones of messages, but almost all of them end with the exact same two words, get up. I think this is experiment 1006 trying to communicate with us. More lives are at risk than just yours. He's trying to get us to help the trapped souls inside the factory. The ones that he himself has spent so long protecting. Why is it speaking to us in two different voices? Simple reason could be that some of his lines are just him repeating back all the things he heard when he was first created. The prototype has saved us. Us. Isn't he wonderful? But there's actually another explanation. Think back to the end of chapter two. Oh, Mommy screams for her life, terrified of being a part of 1006, who drags her lifeless corpse away shortly thereafter. Yeah. Broken toys end up being combined into the prototype, so maybe it's a way for him to keep the toys and the spirits inside of those toys alive. That would mean that 1006 now has multiple voices inside of him. The voices of all those toys that have perished and are now incorporated into his being. All of them trying to communicate with us at once. This, I suspect, is what we're also seeing in the new VHS tape of Project Playtime. It's starts off as normal text, but then switches to capital letters. Again, two very different tones present here. Near the end, we see the line, the bigger bodies initiative will fail, which not only lines up with the motivations for 1006 that we've just discussed, but it also matches the exact words on the game's Steam page. Except right really? there, it's written in a glitchy text. Now, while glitchy text doesn't necessarily prove that it's 1006, we have seen those death screens in the past use codes and corrupted text before. And a robotic monster yeah. trying to communicate in every way possible, ending up 
with text that appears glitchy fits pretty nicely. Plus, there are also some frame-perfect messages in there that appear in the static of the VHS. One that says, save us, and another that says, a pawn and a sacrifice. Again, hidden messages. Other voices all trying to break through. But while I'm certainly excited to see what the prototype pulls out for us in future updates and what his role in the story is going to be going forward, there's still one major question here. Who is 1006? All the giant toys that we've met thus far have been made from people. Mommy Longlegs even got a name, Marie Payne. So if 1006 is the prototype, the one experiment that paved the way for all the others, then surely he too has to be made from someone. Is it Elliot Ludwig? In our previous theories, we came to the conclusion that orphans were being used to create these monsters. They were tested in the game station, and if they were considered fit for purpose, they would get on the train and be sent to play care, where they'd be experimented on and eventually turned into toys. So was Experiment 1006 just an orphan? A random child that's now after revenge? A vengeful spirit, if you will? As much as I'd love to dunk on Poppy for riffing on another piece of FNAF lore, I don't Yeah, you've been actually... doing that for the last for the last couple of Poppy Playtime videos. I think that's the case here. 1006 is in incredibly intelligent, able to take control of the other toys, manipulate and trick the scientists in the toy factory, while later experiments like Huggy were described as obedient. These later experiments were made from children who could be trained and molded into what they needed to be, but the prototype was different. He was an adult, one we've gotten to know a lot about in recent chapters. I propose that 1006 is none other than the founder of the company, Elliot Ludwig. Now, I'm not the first theorist to suggest this. Ever since the release of Chapter 2, it's actually been a fairly common theory. However, I really feel like now we have the evidence to handle yeah, this Yeah, even I just said we that. We know <laughs> that Elliot Ludwig suffered a tragic loss in his family in the 1960s, presumably his daughter, who would then go on to be remade in Poppy. And throughout the game thus far, Elliot is always described as a family man at heart, and he's always giving credit for his business to the children. Now, call me cynical, and maybe I've played just one too many indie horror games at this point, but I see <laughs> stuff like too. that, and I immediately think, oh, this guy's shady. He's clearly killing the kids. But nothing he ever says or does is outright evil or mean to children in any way. Instead, it's trying to benefit children. Throughout the Toy Factory, we see posters pushing employees to adopt and foster orphan children. And while, again, my knee-jerk reaction is this guy is clearly using these orphan kids to make living toys, I don't think it started that way. If it did, he wouldn't be outright encouraging employees to adopt and foster children like we see in the posters. That would be taking test subjects, potential living toys, away from the factory. No, I believe that Elliot did indeed have the best interests of the kids at heart. It was this new <laughs> character, the doctor, who took things in a dark direction, and he was able to do it because Elliot was out of the picture. During the ARG leading up to Project Playtime, Clue Hunters found this memorandum from Rowan Stoll reminding employees about the need to keep quiet about confidential information. But in it, we get this line, quote, Nobody cares about your safety and security more than us. And as our great founder, Elliot Ludwig, always said, Playtime Co. is my family, and family looks after one another. Notice the tense that the yeah, uses. always said. He is out of the picture by the time the whole Bigger Bodies initiative gets into full swing. So where did he go? In Chapter 2, there's a note on Elliot's desk about using poppy gel to bring dead rats back to life. That note is labeled Experiment 814, almost 200 experiments prior to the prototype. Why would such an old note be sitting on his desk? We know at least another 400 experiments took place after this one. Surely memos about those later experiments would be at the top of the pile, but no, we find this old note. A note that, at the very end, mentions using larger subjects for the test. I think Elliot realized what was being proposed here and tried to shut the entire operation down. However, Harley, the doctor, was determined. My name is Harley Sawyer. I'm called the doctor. When I look at this company we've built, I do not feel proud. Declining profits, failed experiments. He specifically calls out failed experiments. When Harley takes control, the experiments haven't been successful yet, just like we see with the rats and the poppy flowers. And so yeah. when Elliot stood in his way, there was only one thing to do. Use him as your guinea pig. That's why that was the last note on Elliot's desk. He never returned to the office. Harley could just lock the door and no one would be any wiser. And so Elliot became the first. He became the prototype. Now it was up to him to protect all those that he failed to protect as a human, both the employees that are being turned into monsters and the children who are in the process of being tested. And he's doing everything he can to stop it, killing researchers that are testing kids, preventing more toys from being built in Project Playtime, and sending us a note to bring us back to the toy factory to investigate, and then continuing to encourage us to get up when we fail. But clearly his mission is incomplete, and Poppy appears to be the final solution. There's a reason that Mommy captured her again in Chapter 2. Remember, 
Lord. She's following yeah. 1006's orders. I suspect that he needs to be reunited with his daughter in some way for his mission to be complete. Not exactly sure yet. Maybe it's just a creepy toy family reunion. But whatever it is, I bet we're gonna find out more in Chapter 3. You know, whenever that comes out. Project Playtime doesn't make so much money that Mob Games suddenly pulls a Fortnite and stops pursuing the single player campaign. That would never happen, right? In the meantime, friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A game <laughs> theory. Thanks for watching. And if you're still looking to get your poppy fix like the orphans at Playtime Co., you can always watch our prediction video for Chapter 3. You do not want to know what they're going to do with that gas mask. That video is on the left. Or... Yeah, I've already seen that, and I cannot watch anything related to the Dark Revival, because I have not played it yet, because I'm a fool! But, <laughs> I'm a lot more energetic than I have been in my last couple of videos. <laughs> I've had, I've had a, I've had a, in, I've had a, I've had a good morning. <laughs> I've had a good morning today. More awake than usual. <laughs> but... <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe all stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.